Let's talk about ziggurats. As I mentioned in the last lecture, the shrine to the gods would have been the most important structure in any Sumerian city, in any Mesopotamian city. The word ziggurat is derived from the Assyrian word for raised up. And we can see that um, from this image of a very old and very deteriorated ziggurat, that essentially it is a mound of earth that raises up from a flat plain. And this is a uniquely Mesopotamian form. And again, I'm showing you uh, the ruins of an old ziggurat, but we can see that it's kind of a, um, pyramid shape with the top locked off. So it's kind of a stepped pyramid. The ziggurat would have been the most important part of any city. And on this flat plane on top, we would have had a shrine. And I'll show you some reconstructions of what that might have looked like in the next slide. The form also indicates processional activity. And you'll notice that there are the remnants of ramps that go up the side in what is called a bent access plan, which means that you don't approach it from the front, but rather you might climb up the side and then turn and access a uh, shrine that's on the top, a temple on the top. It is built in the imitation of mountains. Mountains in this region would have been very important because there are sources of water that flowed off of them and made agriculture possible. They were generally dedicated to a Sumerian god of nature. And this uh, ziggurat in Aruk in modern Iraq, uh, built, we think, between 3200 and 3000 BCE, would have been dedicated to the god Anu which, as you saw on the list of um, Mesopotamian gods I showed you in the last lecture, was the god of the sky. It is a load-bearing construction, which means that uh, the widest part is on the bottom. It's solid from the inside. There's no hollow part that you enter. And as you rise up, the layers become more narrow and narrow and they have a, a, a solid foundation um, in the widest part of the, um, of the structure. This is the earliest surviving ziggurat. And as you can see, there's not much left of it. it in the late fourth millennium, it would have served a population of around 40,000 people in this um, town, Iraq, and the surrounding areas. This region didn't have access to stone. So it is made out of mud bricks. And if you remember, mud bricks were the choice building material for early Neolithic villages in this time. They could be made from baking wet earth in molds and they become the essential building block uh, that could be stacked on top of each other like bricks. But unlike stone, it deteriorates with water. So it survives pretty well if you have a very arid climate, but every once in a while, of course, it would rain, which means that they would kind of melt over time. So they would be covered with a substance called bitumen, which is kind of a tarry substance uh, that gives it a little bit of water of repulsion. Most of these ziggurats haven't survived, but enough of uh, this one survives that we, so that we could make a reconstruction of what it actually looked like. This is a restored view of the ziggurat of Orak and the temple on top, which is called the White Temple. It was a ziggurat dedicated to Anu, the god. And it was called the White Temple because the structure on top uh, would have been covered in gleaming white uh, wash so that uh, it would have been seen for miles around and the sun bouncing off the side would have um, really provided a, a, a really resting view um, from the distance. The main room and this would be a hollow structure. So all of this is solid. You could process up the side and access this temple in the middle. Uh, the room inside is called a cella. 
And inside the cella, you would probably have an image of the deity, a large sculpture, and sacrifices made to it, um, you know, offerings like animal carcasses and crops. A ziggurat would have been oriented to the four cardinal points, uh, so north, south, east, west. This makes sense for a culture that is essentially an agricultural culture. So um, this relates to the, um, the path of the sun and understanding uh, the uh, cosmos and the passing of the seasons. The Anu ziggurat would have towered well above 40 feet over the flat plain of Auric and been visible from a great distance, even above the defensive walls of the city. So seeing the ziggurat towering above the city would also give you a visible, visible connection, a visual connection to the god or goddesses honored there, but also recognize that the deities, deity had political authority even above the ruler. Modern day excavators of the White Temple estimate that it would have taken about 1500 laborers working on average of 10 hours a day for about five years to build the last major um, stone, uh, stone uh, platform of its m massive underlying terrace. And we can assume that religious belief might have inspired participation in such project, but there was probably also forced labor or enslaved labor involved as well. Here is another reconstruction of what the ziggurat and the white temple might have looked like. Um, and here you can get a better sense of that processional invitation um, that is not a frontal access, but rather a bent access, which means that you walk up the side and then you have to make a turn in order to access the temple. The temple itself was rectangular, measuring about 17 and a half by 22 meters, and its corners were oriented to the cardinal points, much like the ziggurat itself. The white temple had three entrances, none of which faced the ziggurat ramp directly. So in other words, you had to make a turn in order to get to the front. And this was a temp this was a typical arrangement for Near Eastern temples. I'm showing you here a much more recent ziggurat in which you can get a better sense of what a ziggurat might have looked like in the time. This is actually a site that has been excavated in, uh, that had been excavated in the 1920s by the University of Pennsylvania and the British Museum. Um, and they, in addition to excavating it, also kind of reconstructed it. Um, so we don't get a sense of what the ruins might have looked like, but rather what a real ziggurat might have looked like. And whether they should have done that or not is a debate for a different day. Um, but I think you can get a sense of this bent access plan in which you would walk up the side um, and then take a turn. This one has an additional uh, uh, frontal access processional staircase as well. From this reconstruction, you can get a sense of the enormity of the project, of the flat platform on which we would have seen a temple, much like the White Temple, and the sloped sides that is uh, typical of the Mesopotamian ziggurat, the, the Sumerian ziggurat. One last thing to consider about the uh, form of the ziggurat is who was invited to come and enter the shrine at the top. Well, there might have been a large procession, a communal procession up the steps, and it certainly invites people to come to the top of the ziggurat. Um, and this might have been a ceremony that would have happened seasonally or several times a year. 
Um, but the only people that were allowed to enter the temple at the top would have been the priest uh, class or the religious people that um, were responsible for attending to the needs of the gods. Maybe the ruler would be invited on special occurrences, but this is not a place for the entire community to enter, but rather to come and provide sacrifices.